Hey guys, me Rebel Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update. All right, let's go to the top of Loveland Ski Area here in Colorado on top of the Continental Divide. Spectacular view after all the snow that we've had and blue skies today, high pressure in control. And this is really the situation for most of the central and northern Rockies. High pressure for the next probably three days, two or three days like this. And then we're going to start to bring in some changes, the pattern shift. So here's what I'm seeing this afternoon. And the main change is to add back into the forecast the second storm system, or at least a large piece of it. You know, this morning it looked like there was going to be one storm that comes through with the pattern shift. That second storm looked like it had disappeared or at least was minimized. Now there's a big piece of that that comes back. And so that has increased the totals. You can see the timeline here for the different areas. I'm not going to go through all these. Sierra Tetons, Wasatch, Colorado. Um, Banff area, heavy snow accumulation hits there first, 320 through 324. In the northeast, light to moderate accumulations, kind of scattered 318, 19, 20, 21. But the add-in here for this afternoon is this moderate to heavy snow on 323, potentially. So that could increase the totals in the northeast. All right, let me take you back. I want to show you a water vapor satellite imagery this afternoon. So on this, again, your moisture aloft is in your whites and your blues. Let me just mark. So we still have our cutoff low down here, kind of cruising and dying, just sitting and spinning. And then here comes the pattern shift out here. There's a low there, another big low behind it. So both of these will be part of that pattern shift on or after 321, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. In fact, here's the latest jet forecast this afternoon. You can see everything there. By 319, still looking at the big ridging across the Pacific Northwest and BC, but by 320, that starts to disappear. Snow develops over Banff and interior BC. And by 321, here comes the first storm system. And there it is, moving into uh, California, uh, the northern tier, and then eventually it moves into Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, Colorado, 324. And then that shifts away, but that's not the end. Now, uh, with the jet stream still in this trough position, that allows whatever else is upstream to quickly get brought in. And there is additional energy coming in from the Pacific Northwest that will drop down through Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, Montana, and Colorado, 326 and even into 327. You can see on 327 the possibility that a low pressure spins up in southeast Colorado and enhances the snow totals in Colorado. So that's another interesting piece of the puzzle. All right, let's put some precip on top of all this. So there's your cutoff low. You can see it's spinning and dying. High pressure elsewhere. But then here come the changes, 320. Everything starts to drop in, 321. Main storm system comes in, 322. And here it comes into the, uh, the interior on 323 afternoon. You've got snow through Montana, Idaho, the Tetons, the Wasatch back into the Sierra and developing in Colorado. There it is. By 324, the storm reaches its maturity, moves out of Colorado. That's storm number one. Watch in the Pacific Northwest. Here comes number two, and it quickly drops down the jet stream. And look at all that snow through 326 and 27. And potentially on 327, it develops into a stronger Colorado storm system. So that's another wild card in the forecast. All right, here's my latest uh, grand total map. By late 327, we're back up with the big numbers. Uh, essentially one to two feet for the, uh, the Wasatch, the Tetons, most of Montana, uh, Brundage North. Look at the big numbers through Sunshine and Kicking Horse, Fernie, Red Mountain. Those numbers are still looking good. Uh, the numbers in the Pacific Northwest as a result of that storm number two have come back up into the two-foot range for most places. And Colorado looking at one to two feet now. Now some of that assumes that on 327 we get the spin up with that stronger area of low pressure in southeast Colorado. That's a long way out, but uh, the bottom line is the numbers have all come up. So by time period, not much today, tomorrow, the rest of today and tomorrow. Second time period, things start to pop up in uh, BC and the northern tier states, and then everything starts to drop to the south. Here's the key time period, 323 through 327. <clears throat> so this captures both the first storm and the second storm system that rides the jet stream in, and so the totals are much bigger. Okay, let's go to the northeast. So again, some light to moderate on and off snows the next few days. The real accumulator comes on 323, late 322 into 323. Assuming it holds, that pushes our numbers up, certainly into the moderate category, right on into that 
heavy category uh, as far as accumulation goes through a lot of Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and even New York State. So we'll see if things stay on track there. It's been pretty inconsistent. But all right, guys, that's going to do it for this afternoon mountain weather update. We'll go back to my grand total map. And again, any place in purple is over a foot. And there are some big numbers on this map. We'll see if things hold together here. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys, and have a great afternoon.